Welcome back to Hello Nigeria and thank you for joining us. We're starting today's show with a story of hope, the story of Eno Etienne, award-winning entrepreneur who shared with us her journey of discovering that she had breast cancer, getting diagnosed, getting treated, and today she has survived breast cancer. That is the light at the end of the tunnel for this story. Now, the hope is that when you watch this story, you'll be encouraged to go for regular checks. And beyond going to the hospital for regular checks, from conducting self-examinations at home, which is what the medical professionals often tell us to do, check your breasts, ladies. Early detection can save your life. But for now, we hope that anyone who is dealing with or who has anyone in their life that is dealing with any form of cancer would receive hope from the story of NOSN. Take a look. I'm sharing my story to be a source of hope to someone. I want somebody who has either just been diagnosed of breast cancer or is currently going through breast cancer or you have family that is going through breast cancer. I want you to be able to see me and have hope knowing that if I survived it, you too can. After the news that I needed to go through chemotherapy and radiotherapy, we were sad. We went home, we drove home so gloomy. You know, we, we already decided that we weren't going to do it. I was going to heal and then come back to Nigeria. I started to have um, retention, fluid was retaining. Now, because I didn't stay too long in the hospital, there was a drain, so they had to take out the drain for me to go home. The fluid that is supposed to come out was now like in my body. So my hands were swelling, and you can imagine like a week I was like this. The, the pain, the discomfort, the anger, you know, everything. So when I couldn't take it anymore, I'm, I'm like, I need to go, to, we need to go to just it. So I need to, whatever this thing is, I need to solve it, you know. Fortunately, we went to the hospital and we were drained. Um, I think it's called aspiration, and I was fine. So the nurse said, so um, when do you start treatment? When are you taking up? Yeah, when I started chemotherapy, and I said, no, we're not doing chemotherapy. And she's like, why? I said, no, because I, do, I don't want to die. So they were shocked, like, you don't want to die. And then she pulled a seat, sat us down, and explained the whole chemotherapy process. Now, um, I need to go back a bit. When this diagnosis came, I was really, really scared. I didn't know, um, I, I didn't know what to do, you know. The pastor, Pastor Good, that's his name. He did, and um, he was such a blessing to my family. You know, he went through the whole process with me. He used to say to me, you need to understand what God has said concerning this sickness and receive it. My pastor told me then, don't go on Google, go and read your Bible. And I think that was best advice for me. I didn't Google anything. So I'll read, I know basically like almost all the healing scriptures. One of the first scriptures that I, I saw was um, in Hebrews, I think, um, Hebrews 13, five or six or something like that, that says that um, I will not in any way fail you or leave you without support or let you down. I will not, I will not, I will not in any way leave you helpless. Relax, my hold on you is sure. So I would confidently and boldly say that the Lord is my helper, I will not fear what man can do. And I understood that with the Amplified Version. So I read that scripture with this meaning and I decided to apply it. So it was everything I was reading was true. I mean, sometimes I'm reading and I'm screaming, I'm crying, I'm like, so this is true. Honestly, that played a major role, you know. So I never said, I never for once said to myself, I had that sickness. You know, I always just used to speak life to my body, speak healing, speak the word to my body, you know. So for every time I got a report, we would always counter the report. So after we got the news that I needed to go through chemotherapy and radiotherapy, it was such, it was, it was like the saddest thing we had. We drove back home really very sad and remorse, you know. We went through that Friday, that Saturday, 
if we ate, maybe it was the kids, we were just all so sad. Then on Sunday morning, I think my sister turns on the TV and we were listening to Joel Austin, you know. That was when I started to watch him. And it was some really inspiring message. So we were lifted up. At that point, we took our bath. We went for a walk. My sister lives in a really nice estate that has the river Thames. So we went by that for the walk. I mean, the breeze and everything, we were able to clear our heads. And we then decided we were going to go for the treatment. So before then, I then they, they said to me, during the treatment, you will not travel. You'll have to be in the UK, no infection. They gave me the do's and don'ts. So at that point, I came back to Nigeria, put my house in order and then um, went back. I, I went to South Africa, I went on a holiday, and then I went back ready for the treatment, you know. So the treatment, ah, the treatment process was terrible. I went through chemotherapy, I went through six rounds of chemotherapy. And I mean, that's like the worst thing you can do to the human body. I'm sitting down with um, drips, passing through my body it doesn't look like anything is happening but the reaction like after chemo the first five days i'm totally abnormal you know this treatment is killing cancerous cells and it's also killing the good cells i lost my hair I, that was like a really hard period for me i would do this and my hair is falling you know I will, maybe it itches me or something and the hair is falling. So what I would even say to like people who have to go through that, man, just cut your hair before you even start the treatment. So having to lose my hair, seeing it fall off, I had a weave on, on with, it was plated. We didn't loosen it, we just pulled through all the lines. That was how my hair came off, you know. It was really terrible. The reaction from chemo, I'm throwing up, I'm sick. I couldn't walk, at some point I couldn't walk. I was really very, extremely very weak. I'm unable to, to eat, you know. It was just a really, really toxic. There were times that I'll go through chemo. I remember one particular night, once I go through it, I won't be able to sleep on the bed. I'll sleep in the bathtub. I'll fill the bath with water, and then the shower is pouring on me. And because my family didn't want me to drown, they were taking turns to come and check up on me in the middle of the night. But that was just how I was able to sleep. You know, there were times that we're all in the living room very happy, and then I was just walking to the room, switch off all the lights, and I'm just lying down there. You know, it just turned my whole body system. I was just really very not normal. I won't be able to eat. My tongue was black. So even water was a struggle. And um, maybe I would request for food. Okay, I want to eat rice. They'll make the rice. I'm like, no, 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 I don't like the rice. I need pepper soup, you know? Just making all those strange demands, you know, hormones, everything was just upside down. I went through the treatment. And I think at that point it was cold. I had been in, I was in UK for a year. I'd gone through the whole four seasons, terrible seasons. See, after that treatment, um, seven years after, my trip in May was the first time I enjoyed going to the UK. I didn't like the place again, you know. We we'll drive, the drive to the hospital was um, almost two hours. My sister will drive, we would all go together. My family played an exceptional role. I never went to the hospital alone. I had them with me by my side. Whenever it was my turn, for the consultant to see me. They would settle. My sister had two babies then. They would wait for us to settle. Put the wheel in the buggy. Everybody's all settled. I never went, you know, and they would say, let's wait for you know, and her family to settle down, you know. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.